Hi everyone, I'm Matt from THKP, and today we're going to be building an IK solver. IK stands for Inverse Kinematics, and if you're not familiar, it's the process by which you have an arm, maybe it's a robot arm that has a couple of bones. Inverse kinematics is the process by which you want the hand to be in a particular location and you say, okay, figure out where the rest of the bones need to be and what angle they need to be at. What I care about is where the hand is and, and figure out the rest. So that's what we're gonna do just for a 2D bone chain. It's just gonna have two bones. We are starting with a little bit of code so we can hit the ground running. Specifically, we have a little bit of code to uh, represent the arm that we're working with. So we've got this anchor, which just has a location and a child. And then its children are bones, and they have a length, an angle, and a parent, and they have an optional child, which is also a bone. The most interesting thing that the bone does is probably the get attach point, which essentially is just defining where the other end of this bone is. This get lock returns where it's attached to. And then get attach point takes the attach location and then adds an offset from whatever angle it's configured to use and whatever its length is. So that's how we're going to be modeling our arm. Let's go back to main. And we're doing a little bit of initialization of our arm. We just have one bone for right now. Once did change dependencies gets called, we move the arm location to the center of the screen. We also have this arm widget, which accepts an arm, and its responsibility is to draw it for us. So uh, let's do that. Arm uses a custom paint, and our arm painter is above. Let's start off by painting our anchor. We're going to need paints. A blue fill style. Okay, we have our blue fill, which is going to be used for our anchor. We will say draw circle. Let's double check that this is working. Okay, so we see our anchor. That's all we have. An anchor doesn't have a length or anything, so that's all we need. We'll make our joints black. So we'll say black fill. And at this point, we will do a recursive drawing of our children. First thing we'll do is we'll say bone child equal child. Okay, so as long as we have a valid child, we will continue to draw them. And we just have to remember at the end of this while to reassign child. Okay, so we will draw a circle. So let's go down and steal our circle drawing from below. Let's make it a little smaller. Okay, so we see our attach point and let's just draw a line that depicts the attachment of the two. We will draw a line between, let's say, child.getAttachPoint and then child.parent.getAttachPoint. And instead of black fill, we will create a black stroke. We've got our bones. Now we want to allow the user to set a target for our arm. And we'll just do that by tapping on the screen. So wherever uh, screen taps occur, set that as the target for our inverse kinematic solving. And in order to respond to taps, we need to wrap everything in the gesture detector. Reminder, if you haven't used gesture detector before, it's important that you use hit test behavior translucent, otherwise it'll require taps occur on opaque parts of the children. There are a couple of handlers that we'll want to use for gesture detector. We can use on pan start and on pan update. And both of these methods are going to uh, do the same thing. They're just gonna call arm.update in set state. Solve is the method where we tell the arm, this is where you should put the end of your arm, if possible, or just get it as close as you can if you can't. We'll just take the drag start details, and that's it, and we'll just say, okay, try to put your hand, so to speak, the end of your arm as close as possible to this position. And for on pan update, the implementation is exactly the same. 
Okay, so let's try the sound. All right. So nothing, but that's unsurprising as we haven't implemented solve yet. So let's let's do that. Our options are limited given that we only have one child for right now, but let's actually implement a trivial solution which just copies the direction between the anchor point and the current tap location. And this makes sense. It's kind of like the destination minus origin. And that gets you the direction that you're, you're intending to go. So let's try this. Okay. So now we've got a little pretty uninteresting pet that just follows us around. Okay. Now let's expand our bone chain. And in our initialize arm, we will add a new bone. We'll say bone, same length, bone B2 maybe. And the parent will be B. And we'll say b.child equals b2. Okay, and this is in state, so we need to refresh our app. Amazing, so now we've got our new bone here, and it's doing some funny stuff. The only bone that is following our finger is the bottom bone, but the other one is not affected, which is potentially unintuitive behavior. Let's update it so that both bones follow the finger. Let's assign these into variables. This solution is very hard-coded to two bones. Obviously, it would be great if we could deal with an infinite number of bones, but for the purposes of this demo, we're just gonna have two. So that's why some of this code is a little bit more hard-coded than I typically would like. And we'll set both of the angles for our new bones here. Let's just see how that behaves. Okay. So now, now we have our, our thing that's following us around. And in certain circumstances, this is actually the correct behavior, right? So if the target is farther away than the sum of the two lengths of the bones, then that is the best that it can do. In which case, this is the correct solution. So we will check, is the target farther away than the sum of the lengths of the bones? Then do this. So if we are far, far away, we see that it still follows us, but then if we tap closer, it doesn't respond. And this is where we are going to implement our real implementation of the inverse kinematic solution. Before I get into it, I think it'd be useful to take a look at a diagram just to see a more intuitive explanation for how we're going to go about imp implementing this. Here we have a little representation of our scene. So we have our arm on the left side. On the right side we have our target. And just to give away the ending, that's going to look something like this. This is probably pretty intuitive for you as a being that has several two boned limbs hanging off of you, but for your flutter program, it's less intuitive. So we're gonna need to do a little bit of math to figure this out. Intuitively, our solution is going to involve constructing two circles that represent the possible solutions of our IK chain. And to explain what I mean, let me show this circle. It represents all the possible orientations of our first bone. Its radius is defined as the length of this initial bone. And this circle is the only set of places that this joint could possibly be. And our second circle is over here and its radius is defined as the length of this second bone. And it represents the only possible positions that the tail of this second bone in our chain could be such that the head lands on the target. As you may have already started to understand, the solution to this IK chain, given this target, lies where these circles intersect because these are where these constraints are met. And so let's go back and show the solved version again. And so as you see, this joint is landing on one of these intersecting points, but you can also see this first bone could have gone down and then up. So we have two possible solutions in this case. But to explain how we're actually gonna find the location of these, I'm gonna add a couple more lines to this. 
to explain what we're looking at. Essentially, these are just helper lines. Our goal is to find the location of these intersection points. But we're gonna use these lines since these are known quantities, and that'll allow us to solve this little math problem. And so what these lines represent, so this is the radius of this circle, and it's starting at the center of the circle and it's landing on the intersection point, and then same as the bottom, and then on this side, same thing. So we've got uh, a radius of this circle, it's starting on the center and it's landing on the intersection point. So let me just hide these circles. We need to take the fact that we know the location of the center of this circle, the lengths of all these edges, and translate that into the location of this intersection point, or in fact, both of these intersection points. And the crux of that solution is going to be to find this angle here, and then we'll be able to say, well, we want a point that starts at the center of the larger circle. It's as long as the radius of the larger circle, and it makes this angle with the horizontal. And indeed, in order to get the, this other intersection point, instead of adding this angle that this line makes with it, we'll subtract it because this will be the same angle as the one above. And not to get into too much math, but since we know the lengths of all of these sides, right? So as I said before, this is the radius of the larger circle, this is the radius of the smaller circle, and this is the distance between their centers. This is what you might remember from math class is a side, side, side triangle. And this will allow us to use the law of cosines to find this angle. So let's go into the code and see what this looks like from a Dart perspective. From our little explanation, we know we're gonna need to find the intersections between two circles. And I think it'll be worthwhile for us to pull this out into another method because like that's kind of a decent bit of work in and of itself. As we showed before, there can be more than one intersection point. So, and there can also be exactly one intersection point in the case where they're just precisely touching. So we need to be able to return more than one intersection from this. Even though this case is already covered by the solve method, I'm just gonna do a quick check for if the centers are farther apart than the sum of the radii, and then we can just exit. Okay, so here we're using the law of cosines, which allows us to specify the lengths of the three sides of a triangle, and it tells us the angle between the horizontal that one of those edges is. And this is how we're gonna... If you're interested in learning more about law of cosines, I recommend checking out Google's interactive calculator by Googling law of cosines calculator or Wolfram Alpha's page on law of cosines. Both of these links will be in the description. Quick point, if you're unfamiliar with the from direction factory for offset, it allows you to provide a direction in radians and a length, and it'll give you the corresponding offset. So this is one of the intersection points. So we are taking the center of the larger circle in that diagram that we had before, and we are adding the length of that one side of the triangle. And we take the direction of the center offset and then we add the angle, which is that angle that we were looking for in the diagram before. And then finally, we know that the length of the distance between the center point and the intersection is just the radius of the corresponding circle. So then that's how we get this, the intersection point. And in order to get the other intersection point, we just do the same thing except we subtract the angle. And finally, we just return these two intersection points. Okay, now we have our circle intersection implementation and we will get these intersection points. Okay, so the center of one of our circles is at the anchor, uh, which is just, we're in the anchor right now, so we can just say lock. Radius one is the length of uh, the first child. And this is where we need to be careful. So the center is our target. Uh, the radius is going to be bone two's length. And while we're here, let's just update this uh, bone one length. 
either one of these intersection points are valid locations for this solution. We might find that one is better than the other, but actually for right now, let's just take the first one out of the list and then use that one. And we'll just see how that behaves. And so just to take a step back, what we're gonna do with this is we wanna say that the first bone should extend from the anchor to the intersection point, And then the second bone should start at the intersection point, which just comes by dint of the fact that the first bone finishes there. And then it should end at the target. So the, the main thing that we have control over is what the angle of those bones are. So we just say that bone one dot angle. And again, here again, let's, let's just call this out. We have a destination minus origin. We're starting at lock, which is the anchor point, and then we're going to the intersection point, which is why we're doing it in that order, because otherwise it'll be pointed the wrong way. And same thing for bone two, right? We want it to end at target, and it starts at intersection point zero. So that's how we define the angle for bone two. And this actually completes the completes our uh, IK solution. So let's let's try this, and we will see how that works. All right. So we. Oh. Okay. Well, we seem to have broken the other behavior. Okay. So we made a stupid mistake here. Essentially, what we were doing. We set the angles and then we also ran this code as well. So we just need to put this into an else. All right. So there you have it. We are doing inverse kinematics. So we can do some other cool stuff. Maybe you would want to build a physics-based game. Here's a little example of using the arm to play around with a physically simulated ball. My implementation of intersections with this arm is less than perfect, which is why I'm not making a tutorial out of it just yet. If people want that, let me know in the comments below and we can set that up for you. That's all for now. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for checking out this tutorial. If you found this useful, give us a thumbs up. And if you're interested in seeing more, don't hesitate to subscribe.